Namo Buddhaya, welcome. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from the uh, Middle Discourses 21, uh, Simile of the Saw. Uh, now, this discourse basically, uh, in this discourse, Buddha gives guidance on what to do when someone criticizes us, right? So, uh, I am taking out the main main learnings from this sutta. Uh, the link to the full discourse is also given in the description. Please do read the full discourse at your end and you will also get your own insights. Right? So, the basic background, the context here is that there is a venerable Fagunna of the top knot, right? Uh, who, who was spending too much time mixing with the nuns and uh, so if any mendicant criticized the nuns, he used to get angry, right? So, so <clears throat> all this was happening, right? So, basically there was this thing that, you know, uh, he, he was called, Buddha asked him to, you know, that uh, please come, I want to meet you. Right, Buddha had a lot of you know uh, uh, such issues to deal with in his sangha, and life was life for the Buddha even after enlightenment was not easy managing this sangha, and uh, that is coming out in lot of discourses, and that reflects a lot about uh, Buddha's humanness even after enlightenment he had to deal with lot of such issues disciplinary issues and everything. Right, so Buddha called him that please come and I want to meet you. So Buddha asked that uh, you know gentlemen. You have gone from your lay life to homelessness, right? So when you leave your lay life into homelessness, you basically give, go with that intention that I totally devote myself to finding the truth, right? And here now you are mixing with the nuns and, you know, you get angry if someone says anything to the nuns and everything, right? So Buddha said, it is not appropriate for you to mix so closely with those nuns. So if anyone criticizes those nuns in your presence, you should give any desires or thoughts of the lay life. Right? So in lay life, all these things happen, you know, that if you like someone, then you do not kind of, you know, you defend them and everything. But when you are on the path, then at least you should give up any such desires or thoughts. If that happens, you should train your mind like this, that my mind will be unaffected. I will blurt out no bad words. I will remain full of compassion with a heart of love and no secret hate. That's how you should train. Right? So Buddha, Buddha uh, the Noble Eightfold Path, one of the elements for this was mind training. Buddha wanted us to train our minds like that because, you know, such situations come in our daily lives also. When people criticize us in our office, in our, you know, relationships and, you know, there is some criticize, crit, someone criticizing us. So first we have to train our mind, be, be mindful. See, the first thing, what is the first important thing is that, and what I can say from my little experience of practicing Buddha's teachings is that, the core thing is being mindful that day, in the day that you pass, right? Uh, if you lose your consciousness, if you lose your mindfulness, then all things, all this knowledge is a waste. Nothing will come to use. So we have to constantly train ourselves to be mindful. So when such a situation happens, you can exercise some restraint, right? You can, you know, not blurt out bad words. You can not have a negative uh, a mindset about that person, right? So the critical first thing is to be mindful. Then Buddha says that, so even if someone strikes those nuns with fists, stones, rods and swords in your presence, you should give up any desires or thoughts of the lay life. You should train your mind. Same, same thing. I will not blurt out bad words. So Buddha is nowhere saying that we should not defend anyone else. No, he doesn't say that. But what Buddha was saying is our mind, the condition of our mind is important. Because what we create karma, first we create from our mind. So in our mind, we will not harbor thoughts of hatred and everything. We will defend, we will do everything that is necessary, but mindfully, right? So that is the subtle difference. It doesn't mean being submissive or something. So Fagunna, even if, so same thing, which strikes you with fists, stones, rods and swords, you should give up any desires or thoughts of the lay life. Then Buddha said, now in this discourse, there are certain things Buddha, now Buddha said to the mendicants. So now Buddha is done with Fagunna. He had given his advice to Fagunna, how he should deal, right? Now Buddha said to the mendicants, one thing in this discourse he is saying is, I eat my food in one sitting per day. Doing so, I find I am healthy and nimble, well, nimble and strong and living comfortably. You should also eat food in one sitting per day, right? I didn't have to keep on instructing those mendicants. I just had to prompt their mindfulness. So Buddha basically started giving this instruction as a 
as an instruction but then some monks did not follow so later on they had to put this rule in the monastic code that eating late night late or at the wrong time uh, is not allowed right so earlier in the set of monks that buddha had they were very kind of understanding of the buddha's teachings so if buddha said something they would used to follow but the later set of monks because as the community increased then it was you no know, lot of monks kind of resisted this move so eating once a day it's it's i know for i'm i have started practicing that right it's not for lay people it's this this rule is for monks right but even you know as lay people we can also start that when you eat in the afternoon have one meal have one full meal you know you have like in india we have roti sabzi dal chawal everything right and then that's it so maybe at around in, in the evening you can have something like a, around 6 o'clock in the evening you can have something like a, 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 a tea or coffee and some some not coffee i think coffee is not it interrupts uh, sleep but some light beverage and some light light refreshment that's it not a, not a, a meal uh, later on i have started following this and it is i have found this to be very good for my health uh, for my vitality for my uh, weight control right all these so so please do explore it's not like i'm suggesting anything but a, everyone's situation is different so but this is a very good suggestion which we all can follow maybe at a certain so i am 42 right now right so at a cert after a certain age we can be a bit more and more moderate in our diet that will help us uh, you know be active till our last day right okay then buddha is giving some uh, uh, analogy of a salt tree and uh, that's that's fine that's fine i'm just taking up the main main learnings then buddha is there's the story about a housewife vedhika and uh, his uh, and her mistress uh, kali right so so basically in this basically the lesson is uh, buddha said that mendicant may be the sweetest of the sweet the most even tempered of the even tempered the calmest of the calm so long as they do not encounter any disagreeable criticism but when they encounter disagreeable criticism that you will know whether they are really sweet even tempered and calm right so important thing with with is here saying is that people who look very calm and quiet on the surface they may not be that calm or quiet when they are instigated when they are triggered so our real test as to how much you know deep in water we are is when uh, the difficult situations come that is the time that that all our things are tested our speech our bodily actions our thoughts everything is tested and there are you know difficult phases in life like separation divorce in relationships job loss at that time if you have a dedicated mindfulness practice you have been practicing mindfulness for some years you'll be able to at least survive you'll be able to keep afloat right this was what i experienced when i undergo underwent a very very dark phase in my life in 2021 and it's only because i was practicing mindfulness since 2016 right here and there and and that saved me otherwise i would have gone into depression someone else would have committed some wrong some, taken some wrong step also right so what we have to do is that we have to continue working on our practice of mindfulness and when these difficult situations come difficult people come then our practice gets tested right and that's also actually good that we know what more effort we it should actually motivate us to make more effort it should not kind of drown us into self pity right okay uh five ways in which others may criticize their speech may be timely or untimely true or false gentle or harsh beneficial or harmful from a heart of love or from secret hate right so whichever ways they criticize right but we we will not blurt out bad words our minds will remain unaffected we will remain full of compassion and we will meditate spreading a heart of love to that person and with them as basis we will meditate spreading a spreading spreading a heart full of love to everyone in the world abundant expansive limitless free of enmity and will so five things what are the five thing first minds will remain unaffected we will not go into hate second we will not blurt out bad words third we will remain full of compassion fourth fourth we will meditate spreading a heart of love to that person and fifth with them as basis we will meditate spreading 
heart full of love to everyone in the world, loving kindness. Right? The five things Buddha suggests we should do if someone criticizes us. Okay, then there is this last thing, and this that's why this discourse is known as the simile of the saw. Uh, Buddha says, even if low down bandits were to severe your limb, limb to limb, limb from limb, with a two-handed handled saw, right? Someone cuts your limbs. Anyone who had a malevolent thought, like a bad thought about that person, on, a, on that account would not be following my instructions. Right? So Buddha is saying that even if someone is like cutting your hands with a saw, so you take all the actions to protect yourself and everything, you do everything. But if you have a negative thought towards that person, then you are not following my instructions. So that is like the highest vision Buddha has for us. We will still have our heart of compassion, right? Our compassion would be flowing. So we are, you know, we all are work in progress towards that goal. But Buddha is like showing us the highest vision that he wants us to, uh, you know, achieve, right? So this is it. This is the simile of the saw, middle discourses 21. Please do reflect this in your life, I am also reflecting this as I speak, right? So on my life as to you know what changes I need to bring in myself, right? Most important friends is deepen your mindfulness, right? Uh, and then all these things, practicing these teachings will become more and more easy. So that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. Do share your insights, your thoughts, your reflections on this sutta in the comment section. Thank you so much. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.